Here we go then. Uh, I'm just going to go over how I match factory orange peel, uh, as you see here. Um, I don't normally do it. I like to get the jobs as good as possible. Um, I'm not a big fan of polishing, so if if I am polishing, I want it to be a selective D-nib, so I want that finish as good as you can get it off the gun, really. Um, not trying to glass it out, but I want a real nice finish, so it's just a selective D-nib, and I'm not having to polish up areas of orange peel because of inconsistency in the paint or anything like that. Um, I just want to get these cars in and out as quickly as possible. Um you know to turn them around and get the numbers up so that's how we do it. orange peel um, I'll get into that now so orange peel clearly is in the lacquer um, obviously you want you want your undercoat your base coat and um, your primer as smooth as possible uh, you, you don't want to try and leave texture in your um, your undercoats um, to try and give you this finish. It's it's all done in the lacquer. Um, it can be manipulated, the orange peel, with the air pressure. So you can turn the pressure down and that will give you larger droplets um, in, in your atomization. It'll just be, it won't be as fine. Um, so probably I would go just slightly under two bar. Um, and and you, can, you can play about with that and drop it down if you need to. Um, but there are other options. You can use a larger needle nozzle, so a 1.3 it would put more material out and it would go on a little bit thicker and that would could give you an orange peel finish um, you know I've got a gun in my box um, a real old cheapy but that that produces an orange peely kind of finish so I could have used that for this but I knew myself if I just drop the pressure a little bit um, and just move a little bit slower on the gun because you want in those larger droplets to land on top of your paint I mean it looks you know through the camera it looks fairly normal um, but I just I thought to myself, if I'm going to paint this wing and it's against that orange peely door, there's no way that I can just glass it out and do what I normally do, get it real, real smooth, and uh, you know just chuck it out the door like that because it, it looks cartoony. I've done it on a Nissan Skyline before. <clears throat> Had a client and it, his wife had dropped some paint cans on the bonnet or something, and it was his baby. Uh, he told me he loves it, he polishes it, all this stuff, so I thought I'm going to do the best job I can, it was black as well so I made that bonnet like a mirror and he, when he came to collect his car he was quite disappointed um, because the, the level of the orange peel on the wings uh, and the doors and that, it didn't really match and I was like well I've done the best I can um, and he said the, the, the job was good it just didn't match any of the car so it looked out of place, it looked a bit cartoony almost um, so I agreed with him just to polish up his wings in the tops of his doors rather than trying to repaint his bonnet to a sort of a lesser standard especially when you're used to working to a high standard how do you do that how do you go in and do a substandard job you know and that's quite difficult for me but you know like I say there's, there's different ways of going about it um, and I felt like the same thing would happen with, with this one if, if I put too good of a finish on that wing wouldn't we unmask it you know it's going to look silly against the door so I have backed off on the air pressure here um, I'm struggling a little bit because it doesn't look too different on the video obviously until we get the close-ups at the end so you, you'll notice there's not as much overspray in the air obviously the the, the filters the spray booth filters up this end here it looks a little bit like it's, it's dragging it away from the bumper but it's not as high as I normally have it I usually spray around sort of 31 maybe 32 psi which will kick out more overspray, but the atomization is a lot finer, which gives me that smooth finish. So yeah, there's, there, there's the tips. I mean, you could go back uh, like we used to do, um, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. We used to lacquer with a 1.4, or at least we did where we worked. Um, and, and that's quite a big needle nozzle as well. That will give you an orange peel, but I'd imagine you'd have to move quite fast. Um, you know, a 1.2 and a 1.4 is quite a big difference. But the one mil, you know, if you go up to a 1.3, the one millimeter difference isn't too substantial. So um, I, I would I would try that first. But like I say, I'm I'm not a big fan of having to match orange peel um, unless I absolutely have to. So you'll you'll notice here I'll end up ripping a little bit in the door just to check. I'm getting down, and you know I've got that level of peel. But it's one of them you need to to get in there and have a look afterwards 
So there's a bit more of a close up, you know, nothing really too much to see on the bumper, but now you can see it's got that texture. Which for me I'm 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 not wild on it. You can see the reflection of the lights. I'm not I'm not keen on leaving jobs like this, but then when you go over to the door and you see it, you think, right, that's it matches, so that obviously when we unmask the car it looks great and the customer's happy with it, so um, I suppose there's my little tips. Lower the air pressure or increase your needle nozzle size.